today I'm doing a Q&A video. I'm getting my... Oh, buddy! Don't step on my sandwich, man. He's on the bed. I'm trying to get off the bed. Here. Hello! <laughs> and that is why we don't film in that direction, because my bed is a goddamn mess. So, um, okay. So we're doing a q and I'm getting my questions from AskFM as well as Snapchat. If you want to leave me any questions, all of my links are down below, and let's jump into it. When did you start developing feelings for girls? So, I, I think it's kind of like a common thing, right? Like when you're a kid and you have the posters up on the wall and there's men on the wall and then there's also women on the wall and you're just sitting there fancying both. It's, I mean, I've kind of always been like, mm, ladies are so pretty. But I, I think I kind of, you better not be going in the garbage. What a handful today. What a handful today. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. But, I don't know, I, like, I think I finally let myself actually realize it and accept it a couple years ago, you know? I started to have crushes on celebrities and I found myself thinking about some of the women that I saw in like fast food places or restaurants. If we had like a really nice pretty waitress, someone who was like my type, I would like find myself thinking about her a lot. So, I don't know, a couple years ago, but the feelings have always kind of been there. Hello, Mr. Pitter Patter, how are you? There you go, just lie down right there. Yes, you're my good filming buddy. Okay, from Cheryl, how do you deal with your anxiety when it's out of control? I, I kind of want to do an entire video on this, but I've, I've developed some more, like, methods on what to do. Like, if I'm out in public, and I talked about this a lot in one of my more recent vlogs, it's even called, like, talking about my anxiety a lot, because I really did. But one of, one of the things that I do is if it's really out of control, like I'm about to have an anxiety attack, I just, you know, I will leave the situation. If I'm in a grocery store, I will, like, leave my cart there, step outside, get some air, or go sit in my car or something, and then I'll come back in when I feel better. Um, because sometimes just having that break, or even just, like, sitting there with my eyes closed for a minute and breathing can really help. Um, if they have a, a washroom or something in the store, a lot of the times I'll go in there just kind of stand there and collect myself for a couple of minutes but you know a lot of the times now I kind of know the days that I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of anxiety and if I can help it I don't go and do a bunch of stuff then I'll save it for days when I wake up and I'm like oh I can tell today is a good non-anxiety day so it's it's kind of about planning you know and getting done a lot of what I can get done when I'm not having anxiety and then also allowing myself to take a step back from the situation. Also kind of being understanding about what I can and can't handle. Like if I really have a lot of anxiety about something, I probably won't do it, you know? But if it's also one of those days where I feel like I can push myself a little bit, I'll do it. But if I need to leave the situation or take a break, I will let myself do that. So. As much as I might get frustrated with having anxiety, and it's a frustrating thing, like no one's sitting here like, I love my anxiety, it's making me a better person. It's just, it's frustrating. It's an interference in my life and it's annoying, but I think it's also important to be gentle with yourself and realize that this isn't your fault. Okay, moving over to Ask FM. first question here is, I was wondering, is it weird to want a female to peg you while masturbating or have them give you a hand job during? Whatever gets your rocks off, man. I'm not here to judge you. Is sex a big factor in a relationship? I think it depends on the people. Some people, it's a huge factor. For me, it's a factor that's big enough that if somebody was waiting until marriage, that would be a deal breaker for me. But it's not so much that, like, I need it every day or else it's not gonna work out. You know, people just have different sex drives, so it depends on who you're dating, really. When I ask my boyfriend what he likes during sex and what makes him feel good, all he says is, I like you, you make me feel good, I like everything we do. How can I get him to be more honest and open about this? I mean, he might just be being honest and open about this. He may legitimately like everything, in which case, great job. And I think by, you know, allowing him to be open and asking him these questions, if he does eventually have a fantasy or realize that he's really into something, he would be comfortable in coming to you. And maybe you could open up the dialogue in that way by sharing something that you fantasize about or something that you would like to try because then he knows that it's not like a no-no off-limits thing to add things to the sexual relationship. My first two lovers were both into freaky things like BDSM, anal toys, etc, which I now really enjoy. My current boyfriend is amazing but more vanilla in bed and I'm finding myself very bored with our sex life. He's amazing but I can tell he gets uncomfortable when I ask him to do certain things. Help. 
I would just maybe have a, a more in-depth conversation about this, you know, ask him what he wants to try and bed, kind of like what the person in the previous question is. Ask what he wants, if he has any fantasies, and then maybe by incorporating some of his stuff, he won't be so hesitant to doing your stuff. And also take it slow, like maybe instead of being like, I know we just had missionary sex every day for the last week, but now I want you to tie me up and uh, dominate me forever, you know? Instead, maybe just add like some fuzzy handcuffs to the, the thing, or like a playful whip or something, like just add it in slowly so he doesn't feel overwhelmed. And also, you know, discuss kind of why you like it and the rules about it, and like if he ever feels uncomfortable, you can stop and you just want to kind of show him this other part of sex that you really enjoy and see if he also enjoys it as well. Favorite summer drugstore and high-end foundation for extremely oily skin, Revlon Color Stay, or I actually really also like like the L'Oreal Infallible, the matte one. Um, also a good one is the, oh my god, what is it called? Um, the Alme 4-in-1, I think. But I will also say that any foundation, and I mean any foundation, has worked for me. If I use the Becca, Becca Ever Matte Primer, you have to be so oily for that primer to work on you. Otherwise, it dries out your skin like crazy. But for me, someone who is excessively oily, like two hours into the day, even with a mattifying foundation, my skin is like, here's some oil, here's some oil, like have a bunch of oil on your face. So that really, really helps that primer. And as far as high end, I really like the Estee, Estee Lauder Double Wear. Um, I haven't tried another super high end foundation just because for me, I'm fine with drugstore, but I, I would say all those foundations are great, but even if those get a little bit oily on you, try the Becca Ever Matte uh, Primer, or I really also like the NARS Mattifying Primer. It's a little bit less mattifying, but it still kind of keeps you more matte than a regular primer during the day. And last question, is it normal to second guess my sexuality as a teenager? I like guys, but sometimes I think I could be attracted to girls. Is it normal? Absolutely. It's so, so normal. And I think another really important thing to keep in mind is you don't have to label yourself. You can like spend time discovering what you like and what you don't like. It's normal to find people attractive of all genders, you know? And also, if you find out that you're bisexual, it doesn't mean that you like guys and girls equally 50-50. Like, if this is straight and this is like super, super gay, bisexual doesn't always mean that it's right in the middle split evenly. Like, some people like one gender more, some people like, you know, it's, it's completely different for everybody and it's okay. You don't have to put yourself in a box just to feel like you fit somewhere. Your sexuality is your sexuality and you can be and do whatever you want. But that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'm really trying to get to 70,000 subscribers within the next couple months on this channel, so share these videos and once we get there, there's going to be a mind-blowing giveaway because that is a milestone I've been waiting to hit on this channel for years. So that is it. I love you so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in a couple days. Bye guys.